Hey everybody, I'm Sin. Welcome to the Book Nook, where we talk about the awesomeness that is books. Today, we're going to be talking about Slewfoot by Brahm. What is a Slewfoot, you may be wondering. Well, I wondered the same thing. I asked my cat. He just showed me his foot, and I was like, mmm, that's not a Slewfoot there, bud. I had to look it up. I was like, what the frick is a Slewfoot? Obviously, this is a tale of bewitchery, and it's about Puritans, and it took place in the year 1666. So, you know, anytime a woman did anything wrong, it was obviously she's a witch, and it was the devil's fault. So Slewfoot, with along the lines of reading the synopsis of the book, you would ascertain is, you know, terminology for the devil. But still, I'd never heard that before, right? Slewfoot. So I was like, well, let's look it up. Let's see exactly like the entomology, the terminology. So when I first looked it up, it just said a clumsy person who walks with their feet turned out. And I was like, well, why would they apply that to the devil? Because I wouldn't say the devil's necessarily clumsy tripping over his feet. I found that it was also hockey terminology. And I was like, uh, well, okay. And that's for like a, a slew foot is, slew footing is like an illegal way of tripping. And then finally, I found that it's an old colonial term for the devil because the devil doesn't have toes, he's got hooves. So, yeah, there we have Slewfoot. So this book, the times when the Puritans had settled in the New World, which is America or the USA, and it starts out, and it's the story of this woman, Abatha, who was sold by her drunk father, to a husband coming to the New World, and she moves from London to this town where, well, they're just outside of town, her and her husband, but the townsfolk, they're all like Puritans, and they're all Bible thumpers, and everything that one does is wrong, and I'm going to read a little bit of the synopsis of this, of this book here. Story time with sin! An ancient spirit awakens in a dark wood. The wild folk call him father, slayer, protector. To Abatha, a recently widowed outcast, alone and vulnerable in her pious village, he is the only one she can turn to for help. And you know why? Because the villagers are always a-holes. They are jealous, they're jerks, and then they all claim we're doing the work of God, but really, they're the evil ones. I get all fired up about this because these people are so horrible. All the things that happened when they would decide like a woman was a witch was evil. This one was a great story of revenge. <laughs> it it kind of like really just wrapped me up in it. And I totally stopped reading the synopsis in the middle of it because I went off on a tangent. I, I guess I'll continue. So together... <laughs> They ignite a battle between pagan and Puritan, one that threatens to destroy the entire village. But who cares? Because the villagers suck, except for a select few. Not all of them were horrible. Most of them, yes. Leaving nothing but ashes and bloodshed in its wake. As soon as I started reading this book, like the beginning of it, it made me angry. <laughs> but that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. When you start a book and it immediately like evokes this like raw emotion out of you it's good because when it doesn't that's a mediocre book right i feel like a book should make you react and feel these things and just there's a few things about this book that i wish there was a little more like in depth in i wish there was a little more backstory on the uh, the wild folk just like how they came into existence. They're these creatures that have human type faces, but they're animals. And they're like the, I guess the followers or the people under old Slewfoot's dominion. But it's not Slewfoot. And the entity that everyone thought was so much like the devil is more of a pan type creature. Like the, the father of nature. And maybe a little more in-depth backstory to the adversary of the pan-type creature. This story, like, I 
kind of flew through it because I had to see what happened because of like the emotional responses that it evoked in me, like the anger, the anxiety, like the sadness, just the turmoil. This is another one. Apparently when I read witchy books, especially if they take place back in the day when there was like witch, witch hunts and people were murdered because a bunch of self-righteous buttholes decided that they didn't like this person. <laughs> but sometimes when you cry, it's the devil too much. He just might show up. This was, uh, I can't call it fun. <laughs> it's, it wasn't fun to read. It was a creative and whimsical and wild and satisfying tale of revenge. Because sometimes those horrible villagers, they need to shove it up their butts. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it. Overall, the character development was really great. It, the story flowed well. It kept me on my toes. I enjoyed reading it. I think I just wanted a little more in-depthness. Oh, and the artwork also. Fantastic. I can show you some of the cover, was done by Brahm, the writer. The writer also did the artwork. Here, we'll show you that. That's Abatha. And then those are the... See, this is why I wanted a little more on these folks. These are the, these are the wild folk. They're like weird creatures with chubby baby faces. <laughs> Tell me about them. Why are they like this? And then that is... Slewfoot, or our pan type entity. And that is another wild folk right there. And then, uh, oh, I can't turn the page. There's Slewfoot again. And then there's the uh, Slewfoot's adversary. This Mama, I don't even know how to say it. Mamunafet. Mamunafet was kind of like a shaman spider person. Sorry, I'm not doing this very well. And then, you can't see that either. There's another, like, illustration. I held those up terribly, sorry. <laughs> but Brahm did the, the illustrations, too. And they're, they're freaking gorgeous. And it was a read that just, it pulled me in. And I just had to keep going. <laughs> I had to keep going until I got to the end of it. And the ending was definitely very satisfying. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today in the book nook. If you had fun hanging out, boop that like button. Come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more books, because books are awesome. Jazz hands. Why do I do the things I do? Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> do you? <laughs> Probably not. Anyway, until next time, we'll see you later. Bye!